Well, welcome to the streets of Tirana, the capital city of Albania. It's the, uh, I guess the 15th country I've been to in my life so far. Maybe 16th, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's a country that doesn't feel very European, although it, it's right smack in the middle, uh, right smack in the middle of the Balkans, uh, the European Balkans. And uh, while it is not currently a full member of the EU, it is a candidate member. And that means that uh, over the last so many years, the government of Albania has been given tasks by the European Commission. And those tasks, if they complete them, uh, will uh, we'll get them into the EU. And when you go by government buildings, which we will in just a minute here, you end up seeing, uh, well, this is interesting. This is a, uh, a little stand on the street for people to check their weight. And usually these guys sell uh, sell things like tissues and things like that. It's a, an interesting thing. Well, the history of Albania is really complicated. Uh, and it's a very, very, very old culture. The hero of, uh, of Albania, the Eagle Republic, is a guy named... Uh, Skanderberg, Skanderbeg, and uh, he was around in the 1400s. He was a he was a badass. We, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, one of the things interesting about Albania is that um, when you cross a lot of streets, there's a zebra crossing and all you do is kind of put your foot out or indicate that you're going that way. Here's a guy that's uh, selling time on the scale uh, and uh, cars stop. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Toronto, the capital city, is a small city. I said uh, that they're a candidate for inclusion in the EU, but right now they, uh, they have their own currency. It's called the LEC. And uh, and it's a uh, very inexpensive country. I just came back from having a lunch. I had uh, I had a uh, bowl of really delicious soup and uh, another bowl of freshly homemade yogurt and a uh, and a beer. And uh, that was and a. Seems like about half a loaf of bread was brought to the table. Uh, that whole uh, meal uh, cost me under under the equivalent of uh, five euros or five dollars, and uh, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty standard pretty standard price for lunch in this country. Kind of in a uh, touristy area here. Um, the architecture is a combination of, of old and new. And there's some parts of town that uh, really look medieval. And uh, in the middle of the city here, in the middle of the downtown, it's, uh, it's very modern. I like this uh, system they use. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, street lights. But the street lights, uh, in addition to having uh, street light there's also a line of LEDs of the appropriate color coming down the side this is a uh, a cash society there are not many places that uh, deal with credit cards there are not many uh, many uh, small places anyway I guess some of the large grocery stores I've been able to use my uh, my credit card in but those grocery stores are Italian and uh, surprisingly to me anyway Italian is the uh, the second language of Albania especially among the older generation because during World War II uh, Albania was occupied by fascist Italy
Little kiosks on the side of the street everywhere. And at night, they kind of lock these up with bars and the windows are open and, uh, you know, the glass is exposed. There's just a little bar across and metal bar. And it seems to be just okay. Seems to be a pretty, as far as street crime goes, a pretty, pretty calm, cool, and collected place. I have not figured out the bus system yet. I'm because while well, I can do okay in Italian, I don't know a single word of Albanian. And I should because it turns out that uh, my heritage actually has quite a bit of Albanian in my background. <laughs> I didn't know that until recently because uh, I always thought that I was half Italian and half melting pot, half stew pot. But uh, it turns out that my Italian family was actually part of the Albanian diaspora back in the, uh, well, I don't know when, but uh, back in the 1400s and the 1500s, there was a lot of uh, political stuff happening between Italy and and Albania and other parts of, uh, of Europe, other parts of the uh, Adriatic part of the Mediterranean. So, so when I had my DNA sequence, it turned out that uh, my DNA was uh, about more between 30 and 40 percent Albania. Hot dog stands everywhere. We're walking into uh, Skanderbeg Square right now. Uh, hot dog here is uh, 200 lek, and a lek is um, is approximately a penny, so about two dollars for a hot dog. Well, this is Skanderbeg Square. Skanderbeg uh, was a very interesting uh, guy back in the uh, back in the day. And his day was the 1400s. Over there is the National Historical Museum of, uh, of Albania. A very interesting museum and well worth, uh, well worth visiting. There's the guy himself. There's Skanderbeg. One of my friends back in Florida said that the, uh, the hoof raised like that means that he was killed in battle. But turns out that's not the case for him anyway. Maybe that's the case in maybe in the case in the United States for statues, but uh, Skanderbeg actually, you know, died at home and uh, maybe died of malaria, maybe died of poisoning. Or the, the jury's out on that one still. Well, like I said, during uh, World War II, uh, Albania was uh, occupied by the Italian fascists. And it was an interesting time. It was a time of uh, great repression. So after uh, after World War II, after liberation, uh, the uh, Albanians embraced communism, which was a new, bright and shiny governmental system. But uh, they didn't do very well with that. And uh, also the uh, the guy that ended up in charge, he. Uh, he was a pretty repressive guy. He looks like Mr. Rogers, or he looked like Mr. Rogers. He's long dead, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it was an interesting time. So they went from fascism to to communism, and uh, then after the death of their uh, of, the, of the dictator, let's call him what he was, um, the um, the. Uh, country became sort of a democracy, sort of a parliamentary democracy, and uh, they are trying hard to get into the European Union, but there are some issues um, having to do with uh, the rights of journalists and some other things, uh, a little bit of corruption concerns that, uh, that seem to pop up from time to time. This beautiful uh, mosaic on the uh, National Historic Museum over here was um, 
it was damaged in an earthquake a few years ago and uh, UNESCO uh, funded the restoration of it. It's a beautiful mosaic and uh, there's uh, you know, a woman at the front holding her rifle leading the troops. I actually saw a political demonstration in this town last week and of course I don't understand a word of Albanian but I did look up on the uh, some of the European news sites to see what was going on and it turns out that uh, some buddies of one of the local politicians here had gotten uh, arrested for on corruption charges for stealing money from the uh, you know from the public and uh, and the politician uh, wasn't busted he wasn't arrested so uh, there were some pissed off people there are some interesting museums in this town the history museum is fascinating it goes back to uh, to Roman times and Greek times and really interesting uh, and then it goes all the way uh, through the uh, through the communist era there's also a fascinating uh, police museum that's uh, that's in a series of bunkers uh, during the communist era uh, bunkers were built all over this country and at one point uh, the story was that there was one for every three Albanians there is no ZTL in this city here <laughs> uh, Albania is a country with lots of traffic in their capital city Well, the food here is super familiar to me because uh, I grew up with a Calabrese mama who came from a Albanian uh, Albanian village, Albrece village in uh, in uh, southern Italy, and. Uh, so the food that I've had here, a lot of it has been really familiar, and I've been trying to eat only in small local traditional restaurants, for the most part anywhere. I did look into the bus system and uh, there's it's complicated because there are multiple bus systems in the uh, in the city and they each have their own ticketing and so on I did come from the airport to uh, downtown on a bus on a uh, on a bus company's bus and it was inexpensive and worked out well. I came here to Albania on a uh, on a budget airline. The airline I came here on was uh, Wizz Air and uh, I think my base ticket round trip from Italy to uh, to Tirana International Airport was about uh, 30 euros or so and I added on some other services like uh, not having to check in in advance being able to check in at the airport uh, having a check bag and a carry-on bag and you know stuff like that and it got it up to about 80 euros round trip and it's a wonderful airline I uh, think as long as you follow the rules as long as you understand the rules and I'm hoping that it's as wonderful on the way back to Italy in a couple days as it as it was uh, coming over here the staff were lovely on the airplane the flight was uneventful I've I've flown Ryanair in the past uh, the Irish low-cost airline Wizz Air is Hungarian um, and Ryanair is kind of the same deal lots of add-ons you can buy and if you don't buy them if you forget to buy them and you go show up at the airport and your bags too heavy or too large or whatever they add some pretty significant fees um, but 
I always found that when I've flown on Ryanair, that it's been a little bit of drama. This museum I'll be going to tomorrow, it's not open today. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this museum. Oh, I was talking about the Bunker Museum, but let me tell you about this one first. This is called the House of Leaves. It's in, I believe, the headquarters, former headquarters of the Secret Police. And it's a museum uh, dedicated to, to surveillance and to surveillance technologies and, uh, and the surveillance state and so on. So I'm super looking forward to seeing this museum tomorrow. I went to a Bunker Museum the other day that was uh, kind of focused on the national police and the, the border police and folks like that. It was, uh, it was pretty fascinating too. I had a pretty good time. And, uh, you know, it was interesting to see uh, kind of the history of, of the police through uh, different uh, periods in Albania's history, starting with uh, when King Zog was king all the way through the modern era. Some of it was a little bit spooky, some of it was a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, depressing, especially the information on how they extracted confessions out of people back in those days. I believe this building is the uh, Supreme Court of Albania. And it looks like it is because there's a, an officer standing guard out front who, uh, like many officers here, is unarmed. There's a police officer directing traffic, something you don't see very often in the United States anymore. I really like this uh, extension of the traffic lights using this, uh, using these LED strips. Really, really smart. One of my uh, goals is that somewhere along this street here, there is a entrance to a uh, restaurant that people rave about, but I have been all up and down the street looking for it. I found another restaurant where I actually ate. It was okay, but I really want to find this, uh, this little backyard restaurant, and I, I just haven't found the entrance to it yet. It's got to be somewhere. Ciao, Harriet. Have you ever been here to Albania? It's a fascinating place. It doesn't feel uh, European, but uh, a lot of people are speaking Italian here, so uh, I've been able to get along. And a lot of the young people, of course, speak English, which is makes it easy. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hang this uh, hang this up and. Uh, going to uh, I've got to turn around and get to my uh, my apartment that I'm renting and I'm actually meeting a friend from Finland a little bit later this afternoon a bicycling buddy and then uh, I'm uh, I'm heading to uh, tomorrow to the one of the universities in town where I'm uh, where I'm uh, going to lecture tomorrow so I'm very excited about that too there's the casino well, all right, y'all. Take care. If you get a chance to, uh, if you get a chance to come to Albania, if you get a chance to come to Tirana, it's a beautiful place. It feels very different than Europe, and uh, and the prices are right. The, the people are beautiful and lovely and nice and kind, and the uh, it's just a great place. All right, ciao.